Praise God. Look, I, I made myself a necklace. I hope y'all don't mind if I wear it. Praise God for necklaces. Amen. We're going to uh, be reading out of Jeremiah chapter 27. Y'all ready to read the word of the Lord? Do you love the word of the Lord? He's got a word for you. Amen. God's got a word for you. He wants to speak to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray right now, Lord God, we take authority over every principality and power. I believe that you have here today exactly who you want to be here. There were others that you desired for them to be here, but for whatever reason, the enemy caused roadblocks and caused frustrations in their life, and they didn't make it. But I pray, Lord, for those that weren't able to make it, and I pray for those of us that are here today, Lord God, that you would speak to us your truth, Lord, that it would ring true, like even an illustration, the Liberty Bell rang true, Lord God, to proclaim freedom over this nation, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we proclaim liberty and freedom, O oh Lord God, in the hearts and lives of your people this morning, O oh Lord. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be the preacher and the teacher. We pray, Holy Spirit, that the word of the living God would go forth and that it would reach into our hearts and in our lives and that it would change us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and read the word of the Lord. Amen. This comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 27. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put them upon your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. And command them to say unto their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall you say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet or proper unto me. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And then Many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, says the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore, hearken not to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you, to remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out, and that you would perish." But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, says the Lord. They shall till it and dwell therein. I spoke also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine, <clears throat> by the pestilence? As the Lord has spoken, you know, before I move on, that's the first time I ever saw this right here, but that's like, sounds like the seals in the book of Revelation. Sword, war, famine, right? 
pestilence. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. Spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. Therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying that you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. Listen to me, even in today in the modern church, we're hearing different people saying different things, and they're speaking a message that says it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. I'm not here to tell you one way or the other because I'm not exactly sure how God's going to wrap this thing up, but I'm telling you, I have a concern and, a, and, a, and a, a feeling in my spirit that it may not go down in the end the way that we've always thought. So we need to be careful, and we need to judge the words of the people that are speaking into our lives and compare it to the word of the Lord. And that which has happened in the past will, re will take place again in the future. And I'm here to tell you that these things are not just for Israel of old. These things are for God's people. And there's prophets that prophesy falsely and they tell lies to the people and the people receive the lies. For I have not sent them, says the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name that I might drive you out and that you might perish, you and the prophets that prophesy unto you. Also I spoke to the priests, to all this people, saying, Thus says the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. Hearken not unto them, Serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should this city be laid waste? But if they be prophets, and if the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, Concerning the bases, concerning the residue of the vessels that remain in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yea, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day that I visit them, says the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. My title of my message this morning is Take Your Medicine. In this story, Israel had lost everything. She was a nation that had been created by God and she had a, been chosen by God and she had a purpose that God wanted to perform through her that other nations would know of his goodness. Nobody else knew God the way that Israel knew God, but they weren't happy with that. Instead, what Israel did was they wanted to live like the world. They worshiped the gods of the world and because of that, God used Babylon to take away from them the things that were important to their worship, the vessels of the temple. That's what it said. It said, some of these things have already been taken, and other things are going to be taken. And one of the things that I want to mention to you is that this, that their own choices brought them to a place of loss and desolation. Does that speak to anybody's heart here this morning? That the choices that we make in our own lives, spiritually speaking, cause certain directions and cause certain reactions from God in our life. If we think that the things that happen in our life are just accidental, we need to understand that many times the reason that we find ourselves in the place that we find ourselves is because of the very choices that we ourselves have made. You know, things like this don't really make sense to the modern church. People would probably say, why would God allow his nation that he created to be turned into prisoners? It's because it's what happens to God's people when they walk in disobedience to his will. When they walk in disobedience to his will and his word, everything starts to go wrong. Then it was Nebuchadnezzar and his army. Today, it's things like alcohol, drugs, divorce, the sin of other people in our lives. 
We talked about that here recently whenever I said, talked about the things that take place in our heart, the burdens. I preached on that last week and the things that happen to us, like whenever we're young or, or you know, in relationships, just living life. And these things happen to us. And, 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 you know, then it was Nebuchadnezzar. But today it's all these other things that we, that try to steal our joy and they, and, and they, they, they cause emotional pain, the loss of jobs, all of these different things. You get the picture. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But the word of the God says that God has come that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And so in the story, God's people are divided. Some of them are in Babylon, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and many more. And then others are still in Jerusalem, trying to keep things going in the middle of chaos and confusion. Does that ever sound like your life where you just, you just got to try to keep things going? Life is so full of confusion and chaos. I just got to try to keep things going. Whether they are in Babylon or Jerusalem, the main point to be made is this, that they are being corrected by God for their past behaviors of rebellion against him. I say correction instead of punishment because, look, God's desire for his people is that they would hear him and obey. I don't know about you, but most of us, I do believe this, most people don't really receive correction very well. Come on, somebody, help me out here. You don't like it when nobody corrects you. Tell the truth. You, as a matter of fact, there's something in you that despises it. There's a, there's a streak of rebellion that we received in our first birth that when somebody tries to bring correction into our hearts and lives, something rises. And, it, and I've learned this because, listen, sometimes I get it wrong, dude. And I, when I bring correction, I, I do it way too forcefully. But sometimes I try to humble it so much and I, like, apologize 10 times before I get to the point. And I've even heard people say before, dude, quit saying you're sorry. You're getting on my nerves. Why do you keep saying you're sorry to people whenever you, you bring a correction? Because you got to understand something. The Lord has already shown me how much I have not liked correction. And I'm trying to remove myself out of the equation and try to let people know I'm just trying to be humble here. I'm just trying to be the servant of the Lord. Because you're not about to like what I'm about to say. So I'm just trying to preface it with being really, really, really sweet so that you don't blame it on me. Or, you know, and that instead you can blame it on the Lord. Because if you don't like what the Lord's saying to you, then that's between you and him. Ain't nobody really likes what the Lord's got to say most of the time. I'm talking about to you, the people of God. I'm talking about to me, the, the, the called of God. And I know because the Lord has used things in my life to prove it to me. So, but don't be fooled. All humans have some level of rebellion in their hearts, right? It says the heart is, the, Jeremiah said it, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. It's sad because it's the rebellion in our hearts that drives us away from God. Everyone in this place, I believe today, you have a place in your heart for God because you would not have come back. And if you've ever been to this church before, you definitely wouldn't have come back here if you didn't have a place in your heart where you wanted to hear something that God would say. So there's at least a little bit, at least a thimble size of a desire to know God if you showed up in this place, right? Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, so or else you wouldn't be here. And with that said, I know for a fact that there have been times in your life that God has spoken and times when he has spoken and you have rebelled. Well, how do you know me so well, preacher? <laughs> because I am you. Because <laughs> we're all born of the same cloth. <laughs> we all have been cut out of the same thing. We all deal with the same thing. So don't ever, don't try to pretend that I'm preaching at you. I'm, I'm just talking with you. We're talking about the word of the Lord together as the people of God. Amen. Let the Lord speak to our hearts. But what's so important about today's message is a few things. Number one, Israel's choices put them in this place. We need to understand that. Number two, it's God's mercy through his correction that wants them here. Talking about in Babylon. Talking about you. Wherever you are right now, if you feel like you're under a place of being corrected, and most of us at times in our life are being corrected in some way, shape, or form with the Lord. Amen? And we don't like the things that are going on in our lives. And it gets frustrating because we want things to move on to the next step. And many times, like, we'll originally show up in the house of God, and we're thinking, I want God to fix it. 
And we want him to do it like you would, like would fry an egg or cook some pancakes and just pour it on the griddle and just flip it over and it's done. It's nice and brown and toasty. And now let's just go ahead and pour the syrup on it and let's just move on with our life. No, it don't work that way. Because many times you think you're done and the Lord's like, I created you. I created the heavens and the earth and all that in them is. I know how many hairs are on your head. I know the thoughts and the intents of your heart. And you over here monkeying around playing games with me? No. The Lord knows, amen, and he desires to really do a deep work on the inside of us. So Israel's choice has put them in the place. God's mercy through his correction wants to keep them there. He has a purpose for keeping us under correction. It's their choice again how they respond to God's correction, right? It's your choice. It's my choice how we respond when God brings correction. And that will determine how long they stay where they are. And that will determine how long we stay where we are. You know, I was just sharing with somebody that I love very much. And I said, one thing that I need you to stop doing is to shut your lips and quit blaming that God ain't doing nothing in your life. Shut it. I don't want to hear it no more. That might sound too harsh to you, but I'm here right now. Don't sit here and tell me that God ain't showing up for you because look, when the Lord speaks, there ain't no negotiation. God, God's not negotiating with terrorists. No, God's not negotiating with rebellion. When God speaks, his people called by his name respond. He's the potter. We're the clay. The clay doesn't backtalk the potter. Oh, listen to me. It's okay if you're going through times in your life and you find yourself in your prayer closet and you're like, God, why would you? God's okay with that. Like if you're really having a heart to heart with the Lord, you know, he ain't up there like, oh, Lord, I don't know what to do with this when they're just, up. no, 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 God. You, but I'm not telling, I don't recommend that. I recommend you get past that place and you're like, okay, Lord, your servant hears. What do you say? So it's our choice again how long we're going to stay in this place of correction if we be in a place of correction right now in our life. In the story, we're told that there are a bunch of prophets that are telling lies. They're going around, they're saying, it won't be long and we're going to be getting up and getting out. It won't be long and God is going to break Nebuchadnezzar's hold over our lives. Or it won't be long and we're going to be back in the game, baby. No, lying prophets all around telling people what they want to hear. And one prophet walking around with a wooden yoke on his neck, how weird is that, saying something different. And what is he saying? He's saying the word of the Lord. He's saying that when God is correcting his people, the best thing to do is to be quiet and listen to the Lord. Stay still and take your medicine. Does it taste good? No. Does it feel good? No. Do you want to be there? No. Should you stay? Absolutely. You must learn. I must learn to stay underneath the correction of the Lord. But that's not what the other preacher told me. He told me that God was going to bless me. God wants to bless you. Amen. He wants to bless me. God has all kinds of blessings for us, but he's more concerned about filling our heart with his love than he is about filling our pockets up with money. The fool says in his heart. See, but the word of God says, the fool, you fool. That's what the Bible said about people, not me. You fool. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. I had this originally, and it's a long story, but I lost my message at one point, but this is the only thing that was saved. And I thought about getting it out of there, but then I was like, but that's the only thing that's saved. <laughs> and I put it in here, so I just kept, went ahead and left it because I didn't know for sure if I should even talk about it, but I see it. It's there. I'm going to say it. You know, many times in the past, we're always looking for things to get us through. And we turn to things of the world. And I put in here, because this used to be my thing. This was before hip hop. I put sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Because we'll turn to things, right? To, to be, and it's parts of the world. You don't, let, let me just ask you a quick question. Come on, somebody. Just, let's just calm down. Let's calm down. Take a deep breath, okay? And, and, and if you're irritated with me already, let's just, just, just take it down a notch, and let's just ask a question. Do you think that any of these things are of the Lord or are they of the world? Sex outside of marriage, drugs, and rock and roll. Do you think that rock and roll was birthed in heaven? 
<laughs> oh, it might have been birth in heaven originally whenever old Lucifer Slewfoot was created with all of those instruments in him. But, but after he fell, that ain't of the Lord. But you see, in my journeys, in my past life, these are the kinds of things that I would turn to. This is kind of gross, but I'm just going to tell you right now. I was remembering when I was writing this message that when I showed up from Lafayette over here, this is gross, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is PG-13 message. I had at least three different venereal diseases in the last two months before I showed up in Morgan City. Thank God they all was able to easily go away. Well, I'm just here to be transparent with you. That stuff... There wasn't nothing nice about that. See, it'll just keep jacking you up. It'll keep messing you up. It'll keep making you dig deeper and deeper and deeper into a pit. You're just getting corrupted. The world, the world is throwing its pollution on you, and it's making you dirty. Okay. And then, and then the drugs. People turn to drugs. And, I mean, the end game result is that not only does it destroy your finances, not, I mean, whether it be drugs or alcohol, destroys your finances, destroys your life. I mean, you get to the point bad enough to where you start shooting drugs and whatnot. I mean, next thing you know, you got hepatitis C, you got HIV. I mean, it's just destruction. And the whole time we're over here trying to numb the pain. And the whole time God's trying to bring us under the yoke of correction. And we're, not, and we're just numbing ourselves with all this stuff in the world that we can't even hear the voice of God. Amen. That's not submitting yourself under the correction of the Lord. That's trying to come out from under it, trying to come out from under it in another way. Whether it's like rock and roll, you know, and I mean, you can do whatever you want with it, but I just keep going, and I don't mean to pick on music, but yeah, I do. But, it, you know, listen, and whether it's rock and roll, whether it's hip hop, Whatever it is you listen to, I just, I'm, you know what I want to encourage you to do? If you still li listen, if you still listen to the world's music, okay, fine. But, but let me ask you something. Can you please start paying attention to what they're saying to you? Because in the modern day society, what everybody's telling me, man, I don't even listen to the words, dude. I just boom, 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 boom. I'm just feeling the beat, baby. Okay, well, look. Okay, just do me a favor. Quit paying attention to the beat and start trying to pay attention to what they're telling you. And don't come around here talking about, oh, the Lord ain't doing nothing in my life whenever you're feeding your spirit with all of the things that the music of the world is trying to feed your spirit with. Don't wonder why I can't get free. Or I can't feel the presence of the Lord whenever, you know, you're over there. And I know I sing the same old song. I'm on a highway to hell. Or I'm running with the devil. All this kind of garbage like that. And my friends are going to be there too. Like we're going to have a party in hell. Come on, somebody. The devil ain't got no bongs down there. People ain't smoking dope and drinking beer in hell. They're burning and they're crying out. And they're saying, why did I? listen why did I leave the yoke of the Lord on my neck why did I receive the correction of God why it's too late now and there's no presence of God down here I can't feel the presence of God and I'm lonely and I'm in darkness and there's weeping and there's gnashing of teeth and the worm doesn't die oh ah, Lord don't you do something it's too late it's too late at that point God is merciful and he's gracious and he loves us so much. There ain't going to be no party down there, my friend. devil ain't in charge of nothing. The devil is a pawn. And he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire, Gehenna. And there he will be tortured, along with the beast and the false prophet. And, and, and every person that receives that mark, and every person that refused to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and we as a church, as small as we are, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in our hearts and in our lives where we would become hungry to see souls won into the kingdom, where we would get past our own situations and circumstances and our heartbeat, like the song said, let, I don't remember the words, but it has let the heartbeat of heaven. Listen, by the way, we need to change those lyrics on that song. I'm telling you right now, he said, how does this, the verse go, the, starting from the beginning? Uh, we feel the... We feel the rains of your love. We feel, we feel the winds of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. It's not let us, L-E-D, us here. It's let us, L-E-T, H-E-A-R, let us hear. We feel the rain. Because if we're feeling, we're talking about senses. 
I feel the rains of your I feel the winds of your spirit and that 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 consumed with our own lives and our own disobedience and our own refusal to receive the correction of the Lord, that we would not allow the yoke of correction to remain upon us, and instead we're just so consumed. No, Lord, let us hear the heartbeat of heaven. How many times, you know, how many times, though, in, when we're talking about correction? I mean, look, we got to understand it's a process, too. God, don't be judging your brother next to you or your sister next to you. Oh, I saw so-and-so over at such-and-such doing this and that. Well, guess what? If you sanctified enough to realize that what they're doing is wrong and you ain't full of a spirit of religion, you also remember how long it took the Lord to get a hold of you. Come on, somebody. Don't be looking down your religious nose at other people when they're in the process. Help us, Lord. I've been in churches before where it's so full of a spirit of religion. I've been preaching against the spirit of religion. I realized one jumped on me a little bit, or maybe a lot. I don't know. But I don't want it. I want the spirit of love. I want the spirit of compassion. Amen. But I still want to tell you the truth with love. How many times did it take the Samaritan woman to finally get the revelation? You think that that was an accident? The Bible says that this about this, about that. John chapter 4, he must needs go through Samaria. That means he was compelled by the Holy Spirit to go through Samaria. I don't even have time to really teach that, but there was great hatred between the Samaritans and the Jews. Great hatred. So much so that they would go over the river Jordan, go through the right side of the land of Perea, cross over the Jordan again just to bypass that slither of land called Samaria because they hated them. They thought they were unclean. They were so full of a spirit of religion. The word of God says that Jesus must needs go through Samaria. And at the perfect time, he's waiting at the well when she shows up. My point to you is this. How many times did she have to go through things time and again, time and again, to realize that the very things she was reaching out to were leaving her empty, leaving her empty, leaving her full of pain. But when the Lord showed up, And the time was right. Hallelujah. Amen. How many times did Israel find themselves a slave before she realized that she was in rebellion against God? Egypt. If you know the history of Israel, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. (laughs) Y'all remember the story whenever, whenever Jesus is talking to them and he's saying, talking to the Pharisees about being slaves. And I'm kind of paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly how he said it. And he said that he said, they said, Abraham is our father. We've never been in bondage to any man. It's like, what are you talking about? You fool. Rome is your master right now. Do you, do you not see that centurion walking down the street with his soldiers? Do you not see these Roman officials taking over your land, you fool? Do you not see it sitting here playing in, with your own mind, playing games with your own mind that you're okay when in reality you're not? And they're still in rebellion as a nation because she currently rejects Jesus as Messiah. You know, this could go on and on in our own lives. How many jobs will a person have to lose? How many jobs will a person have to lose before realizing that it's not the boss, the co-worker? Yeah, I don't know the janitor's fault, (laughs) but instead it's their own fault. It's their own fault. It's their own choices. It's their own laziness, their own sinfulness, their own bad attitude, or their unwillingness to submit to authority that has caused the problems of the past. What is it? I don't know. That's your story. I got my own story. I know the Lord talks to me. What Hananiah had to say sounded good. I'm about to get into that. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and read these 15 verses of Scripture because, see, Hananiah is another prophet. He's one of those prophets that Jeremiah warned against. But let's hear what he had to say. It says, And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, 
that Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spoke unto me, Jeremiah, in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests. Now you can see there's a crowd, two prophets and a bunch of priests. And of all the people, and the people were there too. And thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house. So what we got to hear is we got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. God told Jeremiah to tell the people one thing, and now another prophet is coming along, and he's saying something else. That Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, says the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen. Sound like a good plan, right? Right, church? I mean, look, if the Lord's saying to the prophet that I'm about to free you, if the Lord's saying to the prophets that it's all going to be good, if the Lord's saying, hey, there's about to be times of prosperity, that, that the Lord is about to break the back of the enemy, hallelujah, that the Lord's about to, I don't know, drain the swamp. God's about to come in, and he's going to breathe fresh and anew upon the land, and he's going to bring freedom and liberty, and he's going to break the back of the enemy. I don't know about you, but I'm like, bring it on, Lord. Bring it on, Lord. Bring freedom. Hallelujah. But at the same time, I've learned enough to know this. There's a whole lot of prophets saying a whole lot of things. And many times what you're supposed to do is to be still. And know that he is God. Be still. Keep your eye on the landscape. Don't just believe everything that you're hearing. Don't believe what your heart wants to believe. Believe what God is speaking. Amen? See, I don't know about you, but I want to believe in prosperity. I want to believe in freedom. I want to hear the liberty bell ring. I want to see, you know, that's what Israel wanted. Israel wanted to be free as a nation. But God had another story because, see, you ain't ready. You ain't really serving me. You're not really giving your heart and your life to me. So what Hananiah said sounded good to desperate ears. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, amen, the Lord do so. The Lord perform your words which you have prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? Everything restored overnight. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesieth of peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known. In other words, watch it and see if it comes to pass. Then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and he broke it. You know, it's like, go ahead and lower your, I'm the prophet in the house now, Jeremiah. And I have the word that the people want to speak. Go ahead and take the yoke. Go ahead, lower yourself, Jeremiah. Take the yoke off. Doesn't matter what the Lord said. Just go ahead and take the yoke off, right? Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. Take that yoke off. It's not that hard to take off. It's kind of easy, really. It's kind of big and wide enough to where you can take it off, and then you can just put it back on any time that you want to. You can take it off. You can put it on. It's kind of easy. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet after that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. 
For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah and Hananiah the prophet, hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make this people to trust in a lie. Nobody wants to hear the correction of the Lord. I'm sure they were happy with what Hananiah had to say to Jeremiah when he told him that he could take that thing off his neck. I can hear the people right now walking in the street saying that is so embarrassing. I mean, walking around all over the place with that thing around your neck. How embarrassing. 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 But they yet nevertheless had a yoke around their neck. <laughs> they had a yoke just because you ain't behind a prison cell door don't mean you ain't in prison, my friend. And here he is walking around. And I'm pretty sure that the people are like, oh, thank God. Hannah and I finally spoke some sense into that prophet because that was so embarrassing. Here he is walking around with this old wooden yoke around his neck, shouting all these things from, of the Lord and making everybody feel so weird and uncomfortable. It's so true that when we lose everything, we think, see, they've lost everything. That, like even the things <laughs> that are in the temple of God to be able to worship the Lord is gone. It'd almost be like if the Lord, somebody showed up, the government showed up one day and said, hey, all this stuff, y'all ain't been living right. We're taking all this stuff. Okay, now there may be a day that the government does that kind of thing and it won't be of the Lord. But look, that's one of the things. I've read the end of the book. I've read the end of the book, and you know what it says? It says, now you may not like this. Whenever the end is, you just go ahead and plug your little, your little time frame of the end in your, little, in your story. I say little. I'm not trying to be, be condescending. You take what you want to plug in the end. But what I'm trying to tell you, Daniel the prophet said this, what is written will come to pass. And what is written is that the enemy will be given freedom to rule upon this earth for a period of time. And that means the governments are going to come under his power. And that means that even the saints, I mean, at least the, whatever, what is your definition of the saints in the book of Revelation? You plug that in too. Whatever fits for your theology, it doesn't matter to me anymore because I know what I believe and I've preached what I believe. But if you want to hold on to what you believe that the word saints means Jews or New Testament after the rapture, that's fine. All I know is that there's some saints that are going to be on the earth that are going to be brought under the, the burden of the kingdom of the Antichrist when the end is coming. When the, when the last page is turned, it's not going to be like it was in Babylon. Whenever that is, it's going to be the final, like Grandpa used to say, the coup de grace, the final act. I'm pretty sure that meant, I don't know, he used to say it was the part that went over the fence last. We won't get into all that. All right. Is that even what it means? I don't know. It's so true that when we lose everything, we think that what we really need is to start working on getting back what we lost, right? I lost my car. I need a new one. I lost my job. I need a new one. I lost my woman or my man. I need a new one. Hey, hey, I'm back in the game, baby. I got my wheels. I got my job. I got my house. I'm good to go. I will be taking this silly thing off because the prophet said this. It's easy, right? I put it in here, my words. I highlighted it and italicized. It's easy peasy, right? Boom, done with that. It's so easy to take that off because you see, this isn't a choker chain. This isn't a choker chain like you put on the disobedient dog. No, this is your free will working with the will of the Lord on whether or not you will remain under his correction. The time and the season of correction that the Lord is saying, no, you're going to wear that yoke. And if you want to listen to that lying prophet and you can go ahead and you can do your little demonstration and you can pull the wooden yoke off and you can break it in front of the people, but now you've just replaced it with a yoke of iron because you will not run away from the long arm of the Lord. The long arm of the Lord knows how to get the attention of the people that he loves and that he cares about. 
We're like, well, that doesn't sound like love and care. Just stop for a second and realize where we've come from. (laughs) You better think about that, ma'am, sir. Wait a second before you take that wooden yoke off your neck. Because how many times will we have to fall? You could take that wooden one off, but it's going to be replaced with one of iron. You will not outrun the long arm of the Lord. You see, there's such a powerful spiritual truth here. And that if we try to sidestep the correction of God, we will only open the door to a harder lesson to be learned further down the line. Does that make sense what I'm trying to tell you? Like, listen, I'm about to read a New Testament passage and we're going to close with that. Nobody likes the weight. Angie preached on the waiting room, right? Did she not? Dude, isn't that true? Have you ever been in a waiting room waiting on a doctor, dude? I had an ENT one time. I had a problem with my ear. <laughs> I was sweating. It's a long story. But anyway, he was treating me for free because I knew him from back in the day. I was like, man, I appreciate that, man. This dude's treating me for free. Dude, don't show up for an hour and a half. I'm sitting in there in that room. I'm thinking to myself, I just wish I could pay my bill and get you to get in here. And do like, I appreciate all your help, dude, but like, I'm hating this waiting. Oh, that's a good one right there. I'm hating the waiting. But that's part of the correction. They say that's part of the correction when it comes from the Lord. Is that to endure. To endure the correction of God. And not to hurry up and to release myself from what God's trying to say. But, but, but like, who wants to do that? The person that really wants to be free better learn the word of the Lord. We will only open the door to a harder lesson to be learned. You see, it's not like a choker chain. That's what I just already said all that. You can take it off. This slips right off and on. But how long will it take before we are humble enough to leave it on and receive the correction of the Lord? Amen. God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. All right, we're going to close with this passage of Scripture. Singers, musicians, y'all can go ahead and come forward. Amen. I want to just go ahead and read this. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and it's about correction from the Lord. Remember, my title of my message was Take Your Medicine. Let me just go ahead and read to you what the author of Hebrews said. He said, have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as unto children? Are you the child of God? Are you, do you belong to the Lord? This morning, if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, whether you realize it or not, there's been an ownership change. You belong to the Lord now. See, you may not understand exactly what that means, but as you travel this journey and you resist the Lord and the times that you try to take the yoke off, okay, you're going to learn because how many times will it take? And God uses all of that. I want to encourage you with that, that there's going to be times in your life that you are going to not want to listen to the Lord. That happens to all of us. Amen. But God uses those times to teach us and to and but but until we are willing to surrender to the Lord and to receive his correction, it's just going to keep on happening. So I just want to just encourage you with that to understand that you're the one working with the Lord that can make it stop. I'm the one working with the Lord that can make it stop. Amen. He says, speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. <laughs> Have you ever, you remember, you ever seen a little kid before? You, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all just bear with me. I'm not going to keep you here much longer. Y'all just bear with me here. You ever seen a kid that's been corrected? Like, especially one that's like, got like a little bit rebellious, you know, and he's just ripping and running and doing this thing. He's like, hey boy, come over here. Stop that right now. And he start to cry. He's not, he's not even a kid that would cry normally, but he's been corrected. You know, it hurt his heart. All upset. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. Don't grow faint when you've been rebuked of him. Oh, I done lost all my streak, man. My mama didn't fuss to me. My daddy fussed to me. I ain't got no streak left in me. I'm just so miserable. Don't faint when you're rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges. That's what it means. It means a whooping right there. Scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening. See, that's a, that's a smart kid right there. This is going to take his lick on the chin. How long will it take us to learn to take our lick on the chin? That's a smart child of God right there. I'm going to just take my lick on the chin. The man of God said this. 
My brother in the Lord said this. My sister in the Lord told me this. Listen, we're a body of Christ. I ain't the only one that got something to say around here. Some of y'all got some good stuff in y'all's heart that the Lord's already showed y'all that y'all should be sharing with the body. Amen. And what I'm trying to say is, though, is this. If you endure the chastening, God deals with you as with a son. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? Amen. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all you are, you are all partakers. Then are you bastards and not sons. I know that sounds like a bad word. It's King James. You know what it means? It means you don't have a father. But God is your father. If you're in this house this morning and you're wanting to give your life to the Lord, God is your father. Where of all you are partakers, amen? Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather? But you know, some people will say, but no, I didn't give my daddy reverence. My daddy was old drunk and I hated every time that he did whatever he did in me or my daddy did this or my daddy did that and I didn't want to listen to the correction of my daddy. I didn't want to listen to the correction of my mama. Well, look, we better learn. <laughs> we better learn how to how to listen because they were just a type and I'm sorry if they were bad I'm sorry if they didn't love the Lord I'm sorry if they didn't have your best interest in mind that's not God's fault that was their choices but we need to learn how to listen to the voice of God shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure but he for our profit that we might be partakers of of his holiness when God has us under the correction his purpose is not to punish us his purpose is not to break us to where we can't be his purpose is to heal us so that we can become a partaker of his holiness so that his life in us can begin to be lived through us now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Whenever you're getting corrected right then and there like that little boy, do you feel good about it? No, it doesn't feel good. No chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Healed. I'm going to close with that verse. I always love that verse. Make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. You know, the Lord spoke to me a long time ago about that verse. He said, that was you, son. You had a lame foot. Your foot was, I mean, it was crippled. Spiritually speaking, your foot was crippled. One of your feet wasn't working right. And it never failed. You kept going in the wrong direction. Because it was turned out. It was turned out back towards the world. See, I'm over here, and that foot kept, it was lame. It was broken. It was crippled. And it kept bringing you in the wrong place. And, and, and I, I want to heal your lame foot, son. I want to heal your lame foot so that instead of you keep going in the wrong direction, I can now bring you down a straight and narrow path. I want to heal you so that you don't keep walking out of the way. Listen, I'm taking the yoke off, but I want to learn to sit under the correction of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I just want to encourage you this morning as they close us out in a song for us to just give our heart to the Lord. Amen. Let us speak to God. Let us ask God to work in our hearts and lives. If you want to come to the altar, I would love to pray with you. But at the very least, give the Lord some time in worship and share with him. Use your lips. I love Sister Brenda. I sat at Waffle House with her till midnight. She said, I said, what you doing up there when you talk to them people? She said, I tell them, baby, what you want from the Lord? Okay, well, then you need to use your lips and you need to tell God. Use your lips and you tell the Lord what you want from him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's worship God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.